Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather Lynn. I'm the owner of Lobo Designs and I'm here today with a Procreate for iPad tutorial teaching you how to create your own stamp brushes. You could use these brushes in your laser designs. You can actually put them up for sale if you'd like or use them in any other designs that you're going to create in Procreate for iPad. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on a square sized canvas in Procreate. So how you can create that in Procreate is on your Procreate gallery screen, click the top right button, the plus sign up here, and you're going to pick the square option, which should be your second one. It may not be, but you're gonna pick the one that says square. It should say 2048 by 2048 pixels. You're gonna tap that one time, and now you have your square size canvas. This is what you're going to be using to create your brush. So for today's project, I am going to be creating a simple heart. I'm just going to draw a heart onto this canvas, and then we're going to turn that specific heart into a stamp brush, just so I can show you how easy it is. We're not gonna get into many of the details, but we are gonna go over the high level edits that I make to each Procreate brush that I create, which is lowering the opacity and then fixing a couple of the other size requirements. So let's get started on creating our design. I'm going to use my Lobo script brush right here. I'm going to be coloring in true black. So I'm going to up here. If you're not already in true black, you can just double tap twice down the bottom of this circle right here and it will automatically default to true black. I am going to up the size of this brush to about 14 just to make it big so we can see it on the screen. And I'm going to fill up this entire canvas with just one simple heart. This is going to be the heart that we'll use for our brush. So now we can get started. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to save a copy of this just so I have it for down the road. So I'm going to go into here, into the actions menu. We're going to make sure we're on the share tab here and we're going to share it as a JPEG. We want the black and white for this one. So we're going to make sure that we share it as a JPEG. I'm just going to share image so that it saves to my photos app and then we can go in and we can create our brush. So now that we have that saved, we're gonna go up here into the brush studio and then you're going to click once up here in the plus sign to create a new brush. What that's going to do is it's going to open the brush studio for a blank brush with all of the default settings. This is the side of the screen where you can test the changes you're making to your brush. It will reflect the exact changes as you're making them so that you can see how the changes that you're making are being replicated on the other side of the brush. So if you're changing the opacity, this will show you, do you like the tapered effect down here at the end? Do you want it to start as a solid shape without any opacity? Things like that. So we're gonna go through a couple of the settings, but first things first, we're gonna create the actual shape of the brush, which we're going to find over here in the shape section underneath of the brush studio menu. So you're gonna go into shape, and then while you're in shape, you're gonna go up here and go to edit, now you're in the shape editor. This is the equivalent of what your brush tip would look like if you were just to touch your brush tip to paper or to the screen like we use in Procreate for iPad. So for this one, this simple brush shape is just a circle. We're going to be importing a photo, which is the photo of that heart that I just exported. So you're gonna go up here into import. You're going to import either a photo, a file, or from your source library, you can also paste in here. So you could have gone to your first screen, made a copy of that heart, and just pasted it into here. I like to save the JPEG just so that I have a hard copy of that exact brush shape, just in case. So for this one, I'm going to import a photo. And then I'm gonna pick this heart, this top left heart. So now we have our shape. What we wanna do is we wanna invert this. We want the stamp to be white and the background to be black. So you're going to tap anywhere on your screen to get out of this menu. Then you're going to use two fingers and just press down on this photo. Just one tap with two fingers and it will invert properly. Once you're done this step, you want to make sure that you hit done up at the top right so that you save your changes. Now we have our new shape of our brush here. And there are a few settings that I personally change every time I create a new brush. So I will run through those settings briefly so that you can see which ones I change. And then at your leisure, go through these menus and see all of the options that you can play with because it's pretty crazy. So again, we're seeing on the side here, the brush that we're using. If you can see, it's starting at a very low opacity. It's picking up speed with the opacity here, getting a little heavier with the pressure. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this opacity. We're also going to adjust the pressure because the pressure messes with the opacity and the size. And with stamp brushes, I don't like to mess with the size unless I'm playing with the slider on the regular artboard. So for this, I'm going to change the size, I'm going to change the opacity, and then I'm actually gonna change the spacing because you can't see it, 
but on this screen it's actually a whole bunch of little hearts they're just overlapping so you can't see them but it does start with one heart and if you look here if I hit a, a dot just one dot there's a tiny little heart right there so if you ever want to clear off your screen three fingers and you swipe in a z formation like that and it will clear this out so what we're going to do here is we're going to go up into the stroke path up at the top and we're going to change the spacing so i'm going to bring this up a little bit i'm going to draw a line here just so we can see what changes we're making i'm changing the spacing and if you can see as i'm changing the spacing the hearts are moving from side to side spacing or overlapping whether i go left or right so i want this to be spaced out like that and I'm going to leave the rest of these as is. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the stabilization. I'm going to make sure that I have pressure and streamline all the way down. For this, it was a default brush, so then you don't have to worry about it. But if you were editing another brush, I always make sure that for stamp brushes, I don't have streamline or pressure on. Again, that's a personal preference, so feel free to change that if you'd like to. After I check the stabilization amount and pressure, I skip all the way down here to the Apple Pencil section and I make sure that the opacity is turned completely off. That makes sure that the starting and the ending of each line here will be exactly the same and there will be no opacity that I have to worry about for image tracing or anything like that. Opacity and image tracing do not play well. So now our brush looks like this. If you'll notice, it's a little bit tinier than I want it to be, so I wanna make sure that I also adjust the size options. So if you go down into the properties, you can change the maximum size. And what I do here is I go all the way up. So I make sure that I make it as big as I can possibly make it or as small as it can possibly be. And for this one, I think that that is good for a max size. And then this one is good for a minimum size. So that's all set. And then the last thing that I do here is I go up here and I name the brush. So with Procreate for iPad, if you tap on an area where you can type with your pencil tip, you will get this little mini keyboard. If you tap on the area that you wanna type in with your finger, so let's get out of here. If you tap on that with your fingertip, you'll get the full keyboard. And for this one, I'm just gonna name this heart. So we'll get rid of this and I'll hit done. And then in here, you can upload your own photo. So if you'll see, if you've ever purchased one of my brushes, you'll see it's my face that's right there. And you can actually sign your name right there so that people know who made your brush. Here, you can also create a new reset point, which means that if anybody makes changes to your brushes and then they go back and they use the reset option, it'll reset them back to right where we are with this brush editing. Once we're all done with this, you're going to click done. And what you'll see is it will add that brush up into the top section of your brush library and it's ready to be used. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to, let's just clear this layer out since we already have it. We're going to go over here, make sure we have it selected. I'm going to go and change this to, let's go to like a bright red. Red. And we'll make sure that we have the brush selected again. We want to have a big size on this. And there we go. So you can either make it very small and you can make a little trail of hearts or you can dab your hearts here and there. And if you were using image tracing, you could then go and bring this in and make a pair of earrings. You could make um, a hand lettered file if you wanted to. The possibilities with stamp brushes are completely endless and they're one of my favorite things to make because of how easy they are. And that concludes this tutorial. As always, feel free to join us in the Glow Create group on Facebook for additional tips and tricks on how to use Procreate beyond the screen to turn your digital artwork into physical products. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be notified of future tutorials, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time, this is Heather Lynn of Lobo Design signing off. I'll holla at you later.